So what is going on guys? This is Ryan here and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. No, no, why can't you guys allow me one thing new to do on the channel? I just wanted to experiment with a new game. Ah! I don't even know where I could take that intro from that point on. Welcome back though guys to Doki Doki Literature Club. This is going to be part three and I'm really excited to see what exactly is going to happen this time around. It was really warming to see how many of you guys enjoyed the first episode. I'm actually recording this just after two like I can't get enough of this game. I'm serious. We're about to get into the nitty gritty side of this game. So if you've made it this far in the series, you are in for a treat. I spoke to Razbowski and he said, uh, you know, maybe play a little bit longer for this episode. Something exciting may happen. So let's get straight back into this and see what he means. People also said a little less editing they want this to be a bit more immersive so i hear you i don't know why that, that was stupid now we're going to show our poem that we wrote the other day guys we've got sayori natsuki yuri or monica we're going to start with sayori as we always do this is your best one so far it's really really nice ryan uh thanks for that sayori you've been a little quiet today is everything all right huh of course everything is fine maybe i'm just a little tired today <laughs> Uh, yeah, that awkward giggle. Do you want a nap or something? No, no, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, all right. Hey, Ryan, I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing your poems like the way Yori does, or even Natsuki, but in the end, I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why, you don't want me to get close with everyone else? Whoa, 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 wait. Of course I do, but that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me, and I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you. Sayori? Like, is she listening to this right now? No, 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 no. Ryan, I, I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. Does she not appreciate this or does she but maybe not know how to show the emotion if you had fun with everyone else instead this would be so much easier sayori i, I glanced around the room to make sure nobody else has noticed this sayori i've probably never said this before but i don't understand what you're feeling right now tell me what will cheer you up sayori shakes her head finally she gathers herself and puts on a smile it's nothing ryan it's just a little rain cloud I i'm sorry i had to see you like that i promise it won't happen again just smiles from everyone okay that's all that matters. Sayori, like hiding something that you're not comfortable with is the worst thing you can do in the long run. I'm gonna go home a little early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. Kind of sweet, but um, still going along that theme. Like I remember in the first episode when I was like, we gotta watch Sayori just a bit. It's just standing true more and more right now. All right, let's see what Yuri thinks of our poem next. Well done, Ryan. You definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first, but now it seems that everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. Yeah, it's kind of turned into a nice staple hobby of this club. Like, it's almost a part of it now. It's been fun getting to know everyone and also their writing. And I guess doing some writing myself... Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Ryan? I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. I mean, I guess so. It doesn't matter if you're a good or bad writer, and even my opinions are just opinions, you know. As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's pretty comforting. Do you want to share your poem now? Okay, all right, here we go. We're gonna read it now this one. Beach, a marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface, under a clear blue sky and expansive bliss, but beneath gray rolling clouds and endless enigma. The easiest world to get is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundation until you give up, or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic, and the breeze gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy endrills. Turn back and I abandon my peace to erode at the shore, drift forward, and I return to the earth forevermore. Nice, Yuri. That was a good one. I am aware that the beach is kind of an insane thing to write about, but I did my best to make a metaphorical approach to it. No, I kind of get it. Well, I think I do anyway. Was the message like we're always working at stuff and then it gets knocked down, so should we just give up or carry on? You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well, it was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I suppose 
chose to better compare the differences in our writing styles. It was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. I suppose it's not bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. I guess if you get too into a poem, your thoughts may race. Thanks for sharing that one. Sweet. Let's check out Natsuki's next anyway. I mean, we save Monica for last always because, uh... She does have the best poems. That's it. This one's all right. All right. Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's anyway. I see what you're going for, but it's really just not my freaking style. That's fine though. I'm mostly just glad that you're trying a little bit. Well, of course, I'm at least trying. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems anyway? Isn't that more of a compliment to me? It's not like I care. It's just that one of us in the club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Really now? Well, what if you ended up just scaring me away? That's, um, it's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. Kind of fun to hang even if I have to put up with you. <laughs> Nasuki's elbow connects with- Oh my goodness, at what velocity? Oh, maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I was just joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry, I was too. That seriously hurts. So yeah, we had a bit of a connection with the elbow right there then. Well, maybe it was funny to her. I guess that's kind of the point. I should really just watch my mouth around Natsuki. Yeah, because the elbow could probably land in the face as well. Natsuki handed us her poem. So here we go. It's about the beach. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight. A sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought you had left long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities into the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. Whoa! I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Very romantic indeed. Yeah, I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about a beach. Well, you always taken it was a little more solemn. Well, that's jeez. She better not have said anything bad about mine. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. Ugh. Making us write about the same simple topic than trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I really care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. Last but not least, let's go for Monica's poem right now. So hi, Ryan. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Being in this club is one thing, but performing Performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayari, like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I I I'm not shy. It's just- Oh, she's doing that pose again. I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make new friends with everyone, but Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people. Don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Ah, oh, no, it, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here. That's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I'll share my poem with you now, all right? Uh... All right, wh why are we being so like, uh... The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wonders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day, I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legends is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilt sky. Oh, what? Wait, hold up! I cut back in, I wanted to play through this to see the rest of the poem. Until one day the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything, knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blew me back afloat and I pick up a gust of wind. Dang. 
You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. If we all had the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? Pretty much, pretty much. There's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about the things that are more sad than happy. Ah, <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, uh, yeah, that. Anyway, ooh. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something that you put so much into, but if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, okay, or bad, they want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? Uh, I mean, I guess. And that's my advice for the day. Okay, you three, we're all done sharing. Wait, why didn't she, uh, you know, comment once on Sayori disappearing? I'm gonna say this again, guys. Let me just say this. Sayori left? Okay, it's like Monica knows something's up and she's refusing to actually respond. She's president, Sayori's vice president. You don't know what's being said behind closed doors. Hold on a second. Is it just me or did someone say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. Yeah, there's only the three of us. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. The only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. She wasn't actually feeling too well and went home early today. Is that so? I hope she's all right. Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being lovey-dovey. No, no, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh? That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is f What did she say? Uh, any- Oh my god, why does she do this? Stop avoiding the thing! Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right, Natsuka will be making cupcakes, but we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. For myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Okay, Sari will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, uh, Yuri, you can, uh, um, huh? Guys, can you help me with something for Yuri? I'm useless. No, 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 no. That's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know? I guess I never gave Sari enough credit. I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. That may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. That's great. I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding. Your mind is already racing, I can see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Ryan. The one that's truly useless. Both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way for you to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would would be really appreciative of that. Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond with a suggestion like that? Ah, I, I suppose I wouldn't mind a little bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's gonna give me a choice and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. If I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle baking on your own. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> oh God. Brian may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be suited to assisting me with the decorations. Hold on, I, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway. Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Ryan. What, what are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't. Just what do you think? Guys, stop already. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Ryan to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in you literally just said. I I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though. Jeez. Ryan, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Oh my goodness. Oh, what? I. <laughs> I'm gonna say. Whilst I was kind of sat here thinking, I was thinking about the whole two one dimensional thing. I, I think. Oh boy. By two dimensional, did she mean our character and us? Our character then said one dimensional, meaning him. Oh man, I don't know. That. 
honestly changes my opinion in a weird way makes me want to spend time with Monica. I don't really know who I should spend my time with the most. Sayori kind of said that she wants us to distance from her. I honestly think now if we fixate on her too much, we may make her upset. Yuri's an interesting one because she constantly references some fairly peculiar things which do make me interested. But Monica with her game breaking just kind of... I mean, I, I would be interested to see what she said if we went to her house. I think I'm actually gonna go Yuri just because of how interesting she can be at times. So let's <laughs> freaking go. Well, I'll probably be most useful helping out Yuri. M me? Are you serious? Why would you- Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no, I was just saying- Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Ryan? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah, I, I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. There's nothing more for today, so I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monika and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um, huh? I turn around. S sorry. I realized that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, yeah, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I, I think I think that would be best, yes. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Huh? My house? Uh, is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. I, I suppose that makes sense, but, but if you don't mind, I, I think I would prefer going to your house. I wonder why. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decided not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should really matter either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is nice and clean. I hope I managed to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Ryan. I, I think that will make a very productive team. I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri proceeds to follow. I can't believe this. Yuri is going to be coming to my house on Sunday. My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is this a chance I have to make something happen between us or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off of it. I mean, this dude, I seriously cannot even wait. So he's actually looking forward to seeing Yuri. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about the upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it really doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. We were texting and she was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't too long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayari since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayari said and what Monique has said, is it really okay for me to put Sayari feelings aside when she might need me. I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sari isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her room, and when I finally find her, Sayori? Hi, Ryan. I, I sit down in her room. Sorry forced to smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, I, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? If you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over for today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri? Yeah, but wait, how did you know that? Sorry already had left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica top. Why does she keep telling stuff, man? It's only natural for her to keep me informed about things. I guess that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course, but I'm just helping her online. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep, there's more silence between us. Sari stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So Sari smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Ryan. Huh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been so worried about me after all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this, this is just my punishment. <sighs> Sayori, none of this is your fault. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to talk. Whoa, Sayori, I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah, 
Ah, uh, yeah, she doesn't want to talk. Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Brian, but you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. What are you talking about, Sayori? You're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Ryan? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a good reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste and have them spend it on me? Dang, that's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy without anyone worrying about me. I knew this. I knew this from episode one. I said this, man. I knew there was something wrong. And I was right. I was right with this one. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me that entire time I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Huh? Why is that that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Ryan. If I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. There's that word again. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. That's why I wanted for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else. Seeing you make friends and get close with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. You're right that I don't understand, but I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Ryan, there's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could help me is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed what a horrible person- You're not horrible, come on! Tears streak down Sari's face. I made you join the club because I was selfish, and I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here, and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am, and that's why I'm going to accept the punishments, because... Bro, come on right now. Without thinking, I again grab Sari's shoulders. This time, I push her into a tight embrace. So we're hugging her right now. Ryan, Sari. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile. If I make friends with everyone else, then it's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care. I wouldn't have it any other way. Sayori isn't hugging me back, despite my arms being wrapped around her. Sayori's arms remain at her sides. No, don't do this to me. P please don't do this. Ryan! Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. If there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. She's just saying, I... I don't know. I, I don't know. Gently, Sari puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your, your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Sari lets go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like me to spend it all with you? Um, ah, it's what I want. I promise. I, I think that would be nice. Then, yeah. Sari wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Don't make me feel like I chose the wrong thing right now. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, no, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sari shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You, you understand, right? It's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's it's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right, I'll look forward to it. And with that done, that's it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. It's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over too, but I think Sayori's right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I hope so. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri. Ah, thank goodness. You're a little too early. I I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting a long time? No, 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 I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have just texted me. If I'd have known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. 
That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I'll get everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I take Yuri into my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. I cleaned it before you came over, so that's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no, no, I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah, that would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I snatched Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah, I I'm sorry. I was just spacing out. I it's fine. It's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both her hands firmly on her lap, as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, we should get started, right? I have a few things planned that you can help me with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles, yeah, yeah, of course, because I know all this guy's expert. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place, although many will stop by because they're curious and, I guess, for the cupcakes. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Ah, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, 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 not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. I is that so? That makes me feel relieved and kind of happy. I brought some things for relaxation that I was going to use during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Yuri rummages through her bag, she pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use candles to light the room. I think that will be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that will be pretty neat. What's that wooden thing though? It's a diffuser for incented oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Yuri takes the cylinder and presses the switch, and in just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole in the top. Wow, that smells pretty damn good. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. Uh, like, is it, uh, so you think that will be perfect for when we share our poems? It, it does sound very suitable, but you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She reaches into a bag and pulls out several spools of ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word for each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? I'm gonna cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons and create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? I guess with loads of different words and it'd be very, very interesting to see. Is it just me or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something like that that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Ryan. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yori unravels a long strand of red ribbon to a desired length. Then she reaches into a bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Uh-uh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pat- Oh, so she's a fan. She spoke a lot about knives in her poems too. The blade is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Ah, well, uh, embarrassed Yuri looks away. You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pr- Again, I could see this through the poems again. I, I can't help it. I don't know exactly what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger may- oh, 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 That's a strange cross. Please don't think I'm weird for this. Ah, you're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But it suits you. Uh, suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yori carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I fill the point of the knife with that index finger. Ow! Why did you do that? I, I didn't expect it to be so sharp. I barely touched it at all. I it's my fault. I, I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off. Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and- I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. <laughs> Like, if you don't think about doing that, you know, what the freak? That's the most embarrassing thing I could have ever done. How could I do something like that? I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise, but I guess she was just trying to help, right? Sure. Yuri, I think you're overreacting. She doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? All right, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I'll do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her. Ryan, did you really just do that? N now we're even. Um, Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. If not for the sweet aroma of jasmine oil, the air would be heavy. You're so weird, Ryan. Yuri giggles shyly. 
Huh? You're calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? I, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out by the side. It looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. We need about six cups of water to put the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Yuri? Yes? I, I come to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleep. Pulling it back over her arm. Ah, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? No, not at all. Let's just mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset and nighttime. I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, sounds neat. What are you going to write? Well, it will be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. Painting on a banner with watercolor feels a lot like art class projects we did back in elementary school. It's relaxing. I'm sorry if this feels so childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know. Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri starts painting for a moment, thinking to herself. I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like it when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple like reading. Just having a friend next to me makes things a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Yuri rolls back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, no, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. I'll get a towel and wipe it off straight away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then I dampen it with hot water and return to my room and kneel back down on the floor. We got a change of- Okay. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Ah, it's something wrong? It's hot, I just didn't expect it. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah. I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my- She keeps opening her eyes, dude. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost like she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine all giving me this feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrap around my wrist and a tingling sensation through my arm, and suddenly her face seems to be much closer than to mine than it was a few minutes ago. Ah. Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to- Was that really Jasmine Ollie? What is she putting in there right now? That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with the white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it is very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out way better than expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Perhaps it would be best we leave it here until tomorrow, and then you'll have to bring it in in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Whew. That was a good little session right then, so we got a lot done. You say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself? Ah, oh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. Yuri has to go and make dinner, though it appears that we were secretly hoping there was some time left after we finished up. Yuri thinks to herself, I think it would be too irresponsible for me to just wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time for us as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, 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 it's not your fault whatsoever. The important thing is that we got everything done, all right? Yeah, that's the main thing. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed state, but that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Thank you for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring in tomorrow. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, I kind of say it without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can just come over or we can hang out somewhere. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Okay, anyway. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so you're very thoughtful, Ryan. Yuri takes a step close to me and then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get the chance to as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori? Ah! Hi, Ryan. Sayori. Just now, we weren't- It's okay, Ryan. I just stopped by to say hi. 
Um, well, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? Th that's too bad. I'm, I'm sorry. We'll be together at the festival tomorrow, so that's fine, right? Of course. Sorry, Beams. I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurdles off. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Ah, uh, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me, so I had to come here to see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri, and how close you got to her. It makes me... Oh man, she's getting upset. It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sorry's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way? I'm supposed to be happy. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting? It hurts so much. Everything just hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sorry, don't say that, but it's true, Ryan. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Uh, Monica? Monica was right about what? Uh, Sayori? What? Hang on, what did Monica say? I'm not gonna let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. I put my hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I I'm scared. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that, that I might like you more than you like me. S Sayori? It is true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Ryan, I like you so much that I want. That's how I feel. That's enough, Sayori. I don't want to hurt you. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give you. Big choice. I love you. You'll always be my dearest friend. It's a difficult one again. Because uh, Sayori was so... Like, she didn't like the fact that she was keeping us from everyone else. It's it's like, you, can you truly win with a decision in this one? Is there really a right one? Like, a set one you can go for right here? I took Yuri over Sayori because she mentioned she wanted to see us make friends. And guys, it was nothing more. I, I love you, Sayori. I love you. We've said it. Those are truly my feelings. So there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner, but spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you truly are the most important person. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens. As long as we continue with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Ryan. Oh, this is sweet, dude. Sayori wraps her arms tightly around me. Ryan. Is this really okay? Yeah, I hold Sari in my arms and pull her. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Ryan. I want to be with you forever. Me too. This is sweet, man. I feel Sari's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this? Sari? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I, I always thought this would be the happiest moment. But why? Even now? Why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away. It's okay. It's okay. It might take some time for things to be better. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Oh, okay, I, I trust you. So I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date. What are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it's always been, even if we really are a, a cup. I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. H hey, Ryan, even if I get really... S oh, God, I've just thought of something. I don't know how literal these characters are in this game, guys. Uh, there was a line where she mentioned death if... Okay, I'm not going there. Right, let's go, let's go. This is the best thing for me, right? Uh, I don't really understand what Sayori means. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad? I, I don't know. I, I don't understand what I'm feeling. If I like a... Bro, I've just literally thought this thing. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me? Yeah, I do. That's why, that's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt so uncertain when it comes to Sari. I know that I love her and she loves me, but I'm having as much trouble understanding Sari's feelings as she is, even though I can comfort her. I keep wondering if I should be doing something more, something different. I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sari's the most important person to me, and I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. Bro, we're a sweet character in this game. <laughs> like this. Um... I just had a game file, actually. I gotta open Excuse me? What is this? What is this, like, line through here and then... Uh... Oh... Okay, I have no idea what that is. It says happy thoughts. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 
why I'm just sitting in silence right now. What? It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking with Sari. You know what? I'm gonna save right now. Sari isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner and Yuri I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take with me. Ryan, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri. Why is there no music right now? Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sari with you. Uh, she overslept again. That dummy. You would think that on days it's important she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sari told me. Yeah, and I suddenly feel really awkward. Maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all? Ah, you should take a little responsibility for her, Ryan. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I- Whoa, I'm cl What? I stammer embarrassed. Did Sari really tell her about that that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez, you don't know the full story at all, so don't worry. I probably know- I don't- Something- Guys, something really weird is going on with Monica. If this is your first time experiencing this with me, I'm sat here thinking like, Monica is breaking walls, for, like, left, right, and center. Did she put this in the game files? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Monica is being friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill. She's doing the pose again. Do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets. Yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely keep people to- I can't even dialogue right now. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it a professional feel. I recognize Natsukas and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Oh my god. Get out of my head. I do what I know is best. Get out of my head. I listen to everything she said. Get out of my head. I show how much I love you. Get out of my head. I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops. This is about- Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pin in my stomach. Ryan? What's wrong? Nothing. This poem feels completely different. Everything- It's more than that. I, I changed my mind. I'm going to get sorry, so- uh, Well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. What is with this Monica? What was I thinking? I should have tried a little hot. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes me really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they've always been. That's all she needs, and what I want to give her. I reach Sari's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sari? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I- Guys, I, I honestly expect- I'm walking- That is really something that a boyfriend would do, wouldn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sari's room, I knock on her door. Sari? Wake up! There's no response. Isn't this a kind of breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. I s- I don't- Why did I see this coming?! I'm literally trembling. Okay. 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 An exception has occurred. I got a new file, I got a new file! Guys, legit, look at my freaking hand right now. What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sorry I wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. J just yesterday, I told Sarah I'd be there for her. I told her- I, I can't even finish these lines, guys. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong. Confessing to her. Mm -mm. That's not what Sari needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts tell- I don't know if I want to get these to prevent this. I can't, I can't, guys. If I spent more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friend with her, like I always have been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature corrupt, screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. Nothing I can do to bring her back. This isn't the game where I can just reset and try something different. If I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough, and now I'll carry this guilt until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers, but I still couldn't do what she needed. And now. I can never take it back. Never. 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 What? Um... Okay, I can go back and change stuff, man, if I've messed freak is going on. 
Uh, I need to see this file on my computer right now. I'm sorry, but an uncaught exception occurred. While running the game code, line 57, line f Did these lines mean something? Restart top con- Oh, jeez. Bro, what is happening right now? I didn't break anything, did I? Hold on a sec, I could probably fix this, I think. Actually, you know what? This will probably be a lot easier if I just deleted her. She's the one who's making this so difficult. Well, here goes nothing. That's literally typed in the dialogue. I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm so done. This is crazy. This game is like the best experience I've had in such a long time. Wow, man. Um, I, I don't know if this is where the game ends. I'm sure it doesn't. Um, do I click new game? Do I load a game? What do I do? I, I don't know what to do. I, I feel like you guys are gonna have to tell me what to do. Um, yeah, I have no words for this outro. So, uh, I'm gonna cut this short. Thank you for watching this video, guys. I, I of course hope you did enjoy. And I'll see you for part t uh, four real soon. I can't even talk. <laughs> I can't even freaking talk, guys. Alright, I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Goodbye, guys.